I'm going to be teaching you how to make cordage. Uh, cordage was a really important technology all across really the globe um, and essentially it's a type of rope. So there are several different plants in Wyoming, native plants in Wyoming that you can use to make cordage. One of the most important aspects of the plants is that you're able to break down the plants into smaller strands that you can work with. Um, you can use things like milkweed stalks or juniper or sage bark, but today I'm going to be using leaves from a yucca plant. Uh, the fibers inside a yucca are incredibly strong and yucca or also known as soapweed uh, is found really across the state in different parts of Wyoming. Um, a piece of wood would be nice or even a large flat stone and then you'll need kind of a, a what we would call a hammer stone just a nice smooth cobble that you can hold in your hand and an extra bonus if you have any sort of sharp rocks this will come in handy later as well. So what I'll do throughout this video is I'll first teach you how to process the yucca leaves to get out the fibers, and then I'll show you a couple different methods of actually making the cordage. So if you're gonna go out and harvest, if you have access to a yucca and you're gonna go harvest these leaves, um, you don't have to dig up the plant or harm the plant in any way. You can just take some hand clippers and reach down in there and clip them towards the base. We do ask that you be careful. Yucca has these really pointy, sharp ends on the end. So make sure you're wearing work gloves and probably eye protection would be good just in case while you're harvesting these leaves. If you want to, you can soak the leaves beforehand. It'll make it a little bit easier to kind of break up this fleshy part, but it's not necessary. In fact, my leaves aren't soaked. And so really the first step that you wanna do is you wanna place your leaf on your flat surface and then you wanna take your smooth river cobble. Hopefully it's got a nice kind of pointed in at the end that you can work with. And you're just gonna start gently pounding the leaf. And this might take a little while, but you can see the leaf is starting to kind of break apart. All of this stuff right here, that's all the things that you wanna get off of uh, the leaf so you can access the fibers. And so now you can start seeing all these things in here. So these are all the fibers that are inside of this yucca. And those are what you're trying to get after. So once you've gotten the leaf to where you're starting to break up all the stuff, if it's a little bit more, um, if it's harder to get off, you can start using a sharp stone like this. So this is a just a stone tool that my friend made me. It's just a piece of chert and it's got a nice round edge here that I can kind of work with. And you'll just gently start scraping the leaf, trying to get all this excess green material off and access the, the fibers. Um, again, you don't want to do this too hard because you'll cut the fibers and you want them uh, you want to try to get as long of a piece as you can. So now that this side is looking nice and clean, you can start to see some of the white, uh, the whiteness of the fibers. I'm going to go ahead and just flip it over and try to do this side as well. And I'll probably, you know, you'll go back and forth between the hammerstone and the scraper to, to break up and, and really clean it. Now, I should mention if you don't have access to a sharp stone like this, you can use uh, your river cobble. You can just kind of go through and scrape it. It just might take a little bit longer just because it's not as sharp, but it will help you get the job done. So it's just a mixture um, going back and forth between scraping and pounding to clean off the leaf. So once you've got your leaf looking relatively clean, you know, there's still a little bit of darker green material on here, um, you can kind of just start to gently start pulling apart the fibers with your fingers. If you need to, you know, scrape a little bit more to uh, enable the fibers to come apart, move, remove some more of that green stuff, you can. And again, you're just trying to be as gentle as possible to keep these fibers as long as you possibly can. At this point, if you're still trying to get some kind of residual green stuff off. You can always soak it in water. That will help loosen up the material and help you get these nice and clean. If you want to, you can just kind of use your fingernails to kind of just go down the leaves and clean off. So once you've got your leaf nice and clean, you can keep going. You can try to get all the green off of here, uh, but this is gonna be fine for my purposes today. Um, I didn't go ahead and go all the way up the leaf, so I'm just gonna cut right here. And so now I have um, all these fibers and I'll just again keep trying to kind of gently pull them apart try to isolate you know small fibers 
You don't have to pick apart every single one, but you don't wanna have large clumps. So you just kinda of wanna use your fingernail, or you could use a sharp stone to separate these, these things. All right, so now that you've gotten uh, quite a few smaller strands, you just kinda of wanna gather them all up together and try to get them so that the tops are kind of all around the same area. It doesn't have to be perfect. So there's a couple different ways uh, that you can go about actually making the cordage. Um, the, if you're making cordage the right way, when you let go of the twist, it's gonna stay, it won't unravel. So it's not just a simple braid or, or anything like that. Uh, I'm gonna be showing you what's called a Z-twist today, and it just um, that just describes the way that the strands look after they're together. So what I like to do is I like to hold the fibers in my non-dominant hand. You can see between my thumb and forefinger. So I have my dominant hand, my right hand, um, so I can work with them. Once they're being held in my hand, I like to kind of separate them into more or less two even groups. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'll get this stuff out of the way. So I've separated them into two even groups and I'm using my thumb and my forefinger to pinch this area here so they stay kind of tight, right? So you're not, you're not losing that separation. They can stay in two, two groups. Then what I do is I take, from my perspective, the top one, and I twist the cords away from me. So I just do a little twist like that. Um, I don't do it all the way down the line. I just take a little section, like a centimeter, twist it. And then I wanna bring this top section that I've just twisted and I wanna pull it over the top of the bottom one and switch places. So now that twisted one is down and the untwisted is up. And I'll just, again, pinch with my thumb and my forefinger to help them stay together. And I'm just gonna repeat that process, keeping these two strands apart. So I'm going to twist and flip, right? Take the top, it's always the top one that you twist Take the top one, twist away from me, and then I switch and I pull it down in front of the bottom fiber, and I leave them flipped. So I just keep doing that over and over, twist, flip. Uh, the nice thing about the yucca fiber, so you'll notice I let go and it stays together. So we've got a nice little section of twisted cordage. And you always want to be moving your thumb and your forefinger, just keeping it right at that V, so that way it stays nice and tight as you do your twists. And again, I'll let go. We have this nice piece of cordage. It's not going anywhere. It's not coming unraveled. It'll be nice and strong when we're done. So as we get down to the end of our cordage string, so you can see I'm running out of cordage here, um, you can do what's called a splice if you really want to. Um, so you want to make sure you still have a little, at least an inch, I would say, of, of extra fibers hanging out. And then what you can do is, if you didn't use all your fibers before, you can take a new set of fibers, and what you'll do is you'll fold them in half. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, just more or less in half. And then you'll take that that little loop you've just made. Again, you have the two sections, and you're gonna insert it right in and pinch it in with that V. So the V that exists, you're just gonna put it in there, and there might be a little bulge, but that's okay. And then those fibers join those two separate groups. And you just keep going with your twists, right? And it'll just sit right in there. And when you do a splice, you wanna make sure to make those next twists really tight Try to make it as small as possible so you don't have a huge bulge in your uh, fiber line. But that's how you can add on more length in case you need to for whatever your purpose is. So now we're finished with our cordage. You've got this nice strong piece of rope. You can try as hard as you want, but uh, it really is pretty difficult to break. Uh, yucca fibers are incredibly strong, which is why they were used really all across North America where yuccas exist to make cordage like this. Um, you can tie a knot at the end. It shouldn't come undone though if you've done the twist correctly. 
Um, and then you can use it for whatever you want to. You can use it for jewelry, you can make bracelets. Um, if you need any rope for anything, for any projects, you can use yucca fibers. So if you don't have access to yucca leaves, that's okay, not everyone does, um, you can really use any sort of twine or rope uh, or string that you have in your house. Um, a lot of people might have access to ra different colored raffia. You can use this. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, yucca fibers. So it may not be as strong as yucca fibers, but you can at least learn how to do the technique and the method of the twisting. So if you have small children and the doing the kind of Z twist is a little bit too hard for them, um, there's another way that you can do it that will give you the same result. So what you'll do is you'll hand one side to one person. You do need two people for this method. And each person is going to be twisting the strands, whether it's the yucca fibers or the raffia, to their right. So I'm going to be twisting this way. Charles, my assistant, is going to be twisting that way. So we'll both just start twisting. And this method is a little bit easier for children because they can use both of their hands to do the twisting. And once it starts to get a bit tight, essentially if you kind of loosen it a little bit, it'll start to, it'll start to basically twist on its own. And so you can kind of help it by moving at the top if you're, if you're helping out your child. And then there we go. And then the since the raffia is not quite as strong, we'll go ahead and just put a little knot in the end. But essentially you've created the same thing, the same type of twist as we did with the yucca fibers.